everybody, it's early June and at last the sun's come out. The bluebells are finished and they're all chopped back and now we're ready for planting out the dahlias. So before we start planting out the dahlias, just going to show you some of the jobs that he's been doing in rainy May. In mid-May the bluebells came into flower and looked quite nice for a while. While the tulips had faded and were beginning to die off. But in the greenhouse things were starting to move. Quite a lot of the dahlias were getting quite tall. Though some of them were still got, got quite a long way to go. But all the ones that were, were, were quite tall I managed to get all the growth points out so that they would bush out quite nicely. Now, in the previous episode, I talked about dahlia viruses and I promised you that if I did find a virus in any of my dahlias, I would show you it. Well, I'm pretty sure that this particular variety has got a virus. As you can see, the leaves are all distorted and sometimes they get a bit stripy, like that one. And there's not much distance between each pair of leaves that is to say, the plant is stunted. Now these three plants all came from the same tuber. It was a variety I got for the first time last year. Viruses tend to show up if the plants are under stress. Last year was a particularly good year for growing dahlias. It was very warm and sunny. This year it's been cold and quite dark. So they've been put under stress and so the virus is showing up. There's a lot of research going on into dahlia viruses. They've already proved that the, the virus can be passed from one plant to another, either, either by aphids feeding on one plant and then flying across to another, or by the tools that you use, like the knives you use to cut to cuttings, etc. Now there's evidence that virus can be present in a plant right from birth because it's inherited it from one of its seed parents. And they're actually hoping to find cures for virus, but at the moment I don't know of any. And there's only one thing you can do if you get a virus plant, and that is to throw it away, burn it and put it in the bin or whatever. Unfortunately, I only had the one tuber of this variety, which I'm not going to name in case I'm, I might upset somebody. But uh, uh, never mind, I'll, I'll have to do without it. It's not like I'm short of other varieties. It's now the 25th of May. This time last year all the dahlias were planted out but it's been too cold and wet to, to even contemplate it so far. But at long last the dahlias have grown to a height where they need to start getting put in the ground. As you can see some of them are touching the roof of the greenhouse. And if you look down below it looks like a scene from the tropical rainforest. I'm sure I'm no different from any other gardener, no matter what space you've got in your greenhouse, you've never quite got enough, have you? Having to plant them so close means that some of them don't grow very tall because they don't get enough light. So I brought some of the shorter growing ones into the garage where they get a bit more light. At this time of year you always think to yourself, they'll never catch up, but they always do, you know. When I start the planting, I'll just have to leave them a space that I can put them into later. Here's a whole tray of high debut, one of my favourites which I talked about in previous videos. They're just about showing signs of life. Although, funnily enough, that one is doing okay. I've been round and done my final count up of all the dahlias that I've got that are suitable for putting into the ground. So I'm now going to have to update my spreadsheet on the computer. So here's the updated plan. And I've used that data to, to make a plan for each of the beds. Each state gets a number. And then each number gets allocated a dahlia. So I'm now ready to start planting. Let me start by telling you about the types of stake we use. The best sort are rebar, reinforcement bar made of iron. 
painted with either spray paint or rust resistant paint it doesn't make any difference the beauty of them is that anybody can push them into the ground you don't need to knock them they just push straight in similar are plastic coated metal metal ones that uh, are again easy to use but they do have a tendency to lose the plastic when they get a little bit older as you can see with this sort it's already going rusty inside even though I've only had them about seven or eight years finally wooden ones the problem with wooden ones is that uh, they're, they're difficult to get in the ground you have to bash them in you can't uh, just push them into the ground like the metal sort and they're quite hard you have to really give them a good wallop to get them in Heather, Heather here is struggling a bit with the with the hammer she's not uh, she's not got the uh, accuracy to do it she's tried the uh, the bigger hammer but as you can see it's a bad workman that blazes its tools so I'm afraid and most of the states are gonna have to be pushed in by a man or in our case me even though I broke my wrist to get the planting process started I've put in the, the first row of stakes the tallest ones that are grow right at the back of the border next to the green fence in previous years I've always placed the stakes about two and a half feet apart but this year I've decided to put them a little bit closer than that to make sure that I don't see any green fence once the dahlias are growing properly so they're around two feet apart I would say in years gone by I put all my stakes in all before I started planting out any dahlias so it looked a bit like a graveyard but the trouble is I found that I, I was falling over the things and so I now decided that the best way to do it is to put a line of sticks in plant the first row of dahlias then put some more sticks in afterwards makes it easier and so the planting begins I start at the back next to the green fence which is the longest row there is and for each, for each plant I dig a hole if there are any bits of weeds along the way I throw them down the hole it'll do as extra uh, ballast now as I mentioned in previous videos all I use for my fertilizer is either my is my own homemade compost which I use from last year's uh, stalks and leaves etc plus the blood fish and bone which I've already spread on and I take that to the hole and each each plant is going to get a good spadeful of compost I don't feed them with anything else no artificial fertilizers anything else of that nature it's that's good enough for the whole year As you can see I've put the plants ready to plant them out but there's one or two gaps where the plant's not big enough yet and I do a whole row I've found out that uh, having a pillow to kneel on makes sure I don't get bursitis in my knees which I've had in previous years my wife made me that and it's one of the best things she's uh, ever thought up neatly firm in each plant in and then tie them up to the stake so that they don't get blown around in the wind I like to do two or three pieces of string for each plant so that they're well anchored As you can see there's quite a bit of growth room in there it's no use having them tight, too tight when they if the strings too tight around the the stalks then the, the, the string can cut into them so I've now finished the first row and I put the sticks in for the second row and I put them in a, in a, a zigzag pattern as you can see so that's the third row done as you can see I've left a path about two and a half three foot wide so that you can walk up and down it that's useful for later in the season when you're having to tie them up 
I thought that you might like to see my beach hedge. I planted this beach hedge about 25, 30 years ago. As you can see I've mixed the ordinary green beach with the copper beach and at this time of the year I think it looks stunning. The great advantage of a beach hedge is that you only need to cut it once a year. I usually do it about mid-July. So that's this bed completed. At the front I'm going to be having more bedding dahlias, dwarf ones, salvias, argyranthemums and then at the front of the border I'm planning to have some lobelia if it grows okay. And the labelling goes on and on and on in the hands of a supreme labeler. The thing is if we didn't do this labelling I wouldn't be able to do this. I wouldn't be able to keep track of what's where and when it comes to digging them up I would lose all the tubers, wouldn't know which one's which. So it's very important that I keep close track on where everything's planted so proper labelling is needed. And that's the second bed finished. If all goes to plan the tall dahlias at the back of the bed will stop you being able to see the greenhouse come September. I didn't quite achieve my aim last year because you could still see the greenhouse from certain angles so this year I've put a couple of extra dailies in at the back of the bed to try to make sure it does get covered up. Now at the front of the bed I hadn't actually got any dahlias. I've got a combination, a blue-yellow combination of an aster called Monsch and a Rudbeckia called Goldsturm. Monsch is probably one of the best asters on the market because it doesn't get mildew. Goldsturm is a Rudbeckia that grows to about two feet high which is slightly shorter than the Munch aster so it makes a beautiful blue-yellow combination. Last year I tried to grow dahlias behind the Munch and they got swamped so I've given them a miss this year. I'll possibly grow a few Cosmos or some other tall growing annual behind. Just a few words about the type of string that I use. Early in the season I like to use jute. Whereas later in the season I use polypropylene string. Over the years I've found that jute string deteriorates as the season goes by. It sounds a bad thing but actually it's quite good. As the year goes by the, the width of the stems of the dahlias grows. Because the jute string breaks it doesn't cut into the plant whereas polypropylene doesn't deteriorate and you might find that the, the, the string actually cuts into the plant. The advantage of polypropylene string is that while it's relatively strong compared with jute it's also easy to tie and untie. As plants get taller and the branches get bigger and wider I quite often find that I need to untie a knot and retie it around the bigger plant. Polypropylene is easy to do. One thing I've learned not to do over the years is to let the jute string dangle onto the ground. I've got one of those mini flamethrowers called a weed wand. One year I was trying to burn some of the weeds off around the base of a dahlia. I turned round and the dahlia was in, on fire. The string had caught fire and set fire to the dahlia. I managed to rescue it but I got burnt fingers. So now I try to remember to cut the string so that it doesn't dangle on the soil. And that's the third bed planted out. I quite like to use this bed as a test bed for uh, dahlias that I've not grown before, for new ones. When you get a new dahlia, you, you're never sure how tall it's going to grow in your own garden. It might say three foot six in the catalogue, but it might grow to five foot in my garden. By planting new ones alongside the path, I can then be confident that even if it doesn't grow as tall as it says on the packet, at least people will be able to see it. Now a few words about planting depth. When I plant them into the plant pots at the start of the season, I like to get the crown, and where the, the place where the stalk joins the, the tuber under the soil, but sometimes it's not possible, particularly if you've got a long tuber that goes right down to the bottom of the pot. Now quite often you get new roots coming from that very place, and so it's important that when you plant them into the ground that you do cover that area up. 
Some of the exhibition growers would advise you to plant to the depth of the second pair of leaves, but I don't like do doing that because I'm aiming for height. They're not bothered about height, but I want the, the full height of the dahlia. So I just make sure that the, the place where the crown meets the stalk gets covered up. So there we are. Another bed done, but as I plant out more and more, gaps start to emerge. Where plants haven't developed enough to plant out yet. There are still plenty still growing in the greenhouse, waiting for them to develop sufficiently strongly to be able to plant them out. I thought you might be interested to see this little plant which was grown as a pot tuber. As you can see it was only grown in a small pot, but already it's forming another tuber. So that's it folks. Today's the last of the big planting out days. I've planted out something like 350-360 dahlias in a week. Now there's just the small matter of planting out a few bedding dahlias as well as some fuchsias and quite a lot of salvias. The next job will be to start sorting out these pot tubers. Now, before I finish, I realised that I'd rather glossed over my planning process. I did mention that I'd updated my spreadsheet to take account of how many of a variety I'd actually got to plant. Then you made use of Microsoft Excel spreadsheet processes to transpose that data into height order so that the tallest ones are at the top, the shorter ones are at the bottom of the spreadsheet, etc. I used that to make a tick list so that when I was making my plan I could tick off when I'd actually put a dahlia against the stake. Obviously I put the tall dahlias at the back of the bed, the short dahlias at the front of the bed and the intermediate heights in the middle of the bed. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't worry about colours when I'm doing my planning, it's all about height. All I make sure is that uh, if I've got a, more than one of a particular variety, I try to keep them apart, put them in separate beds, etc. I hope that helps clarify how I go about things. I know it's a bit complicated, it's complicated for me, I get, I get stuck. I've had a, a computer problem and I was unable to start my digging until I got my computer back working because I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. So, so that's it for this episode folks. Tune in to the next episode when I'll show you how I've planted out my bedding dahlias as well as some other bedding plants and my salvias. Nah, I think you're a bit old for pole dancing, love.